everybody, and welcome to Transformation Nation. I'm Alexi Panos, and every week I'm bringing you wonderful little nuggets of goodness that will ignite and inspire transformation in your life. Let's get right to it. What's up, Transformers? Welcome to another edition of Transformation Nation. I'm here today with a guest that I'm super excited about. She's a certified relationship coach. She's a life coach. She's a motivational speaker, an author, and an interfaith minister. And guess what? She's my mom. How cool is that? (laughs) (laughs) I love that I'm able to share her with all of you because not only is she my mom and did a phenomenal job at raising me, but she also has quite a resume and is up to some pretty cool things in the world. So I wanted to bring her on and share her point of view with you guys. And, and she's, she's doing a lot of really cool stuff. So I'm really excited to have you as a guest today, mom and everyone. Her name is Rihanna Milne, but I'm going to call her mom. Cause that's what I call her. So everyone's going to have to be okay with that. <laughs> um, so let's talk about your initial transformation. You've done all these things in life. You've I, and I didn't mention this in the intro, but you were also a model for years and owned your own talent agency. And, you know, you've done all these things. You've had a ton of businesses. You're an entrepreneur. What is it that made you say, you know what, there's something bigger out there to live a bigger life? What was it that made you commit to that for yourself? Well, I guess I was a typical teenager in most ways. Um, however, the, the first thing that really influenced the change in my life was when my very dear childhood friend since the age of four, his name's Michael Marcucci, was killed by a drunk driver when we were 16. Hmm. And he was in intensive care for a couple of days. And I just saw Michael pull through and then he didn't. And it was a real, real shock to my life. And it really made me go deep and introspective. And I always enjoyed writing. I was quite good in English. But at that point, my writing got deeper and more motivational, more inspirational. And I, I decided to take a spiritual path to try and figure out what life was all about. Hmm. Actually, uh, I I said to his priest, I said, you know, how could God take Michael when he's one of the great ones? You know, he's friends with the freaks and the geeks and the nerds, and we all loved him dearly at high school. But um, he said, you know, let Michael's loss be a gain to your life in the sense that live with purpose. Hmm. Understand that life is a gift and you don't know how many days you'll be given. So that really took that seriously and started getting very deep with what do I want to do in my life? And um, one of my, you know, I had like five goals at 17. And this is something I work with my teenagers within the counseling practice of there. I don't know what to go to college for. I have so many things I want to do. And I said, well, where's your passion right now? Yeah. Go for what you want right now. Set your lifelong dreams and feel that you can reach them all, reach one, then go for the next one. Mm -hmm. This kind of set up where I I led to in my life, because I had five goals that I wanted to reach. One was definitely to be a mom, and I love my girls. (laughs) Another one is, you know, I wanted to be an author, and one of my big dreams was to be in the Barnes & Noble store, and another one was to be a counselor, Um, and, you know, to be in the model and talent business, which I was, and we worked together in that capacity. So, you know, I'm looking at my life now that I'm in my 50s, and I've reached most of all those goals. I have one or two left to go. <laughs> because I'm always growing and challenging myself. You know how it is, babe. That's how I raised you. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that's how it started. And then uh, I married young. I married your father for, uh, that I met at Penn State. And back in the day, you kind of married your college sweetheart, you know, but we were very young. I was 21 and he was 22, you know, and then at 24, another major life event happened. My dear friend and roommate of three years at Penn State was murdered by her boyfriend. So then I had a deep compassion to want to help women of domestic violence and anyone in abusive relationships. And um, I know this is kind of sensitive because you're my daughter, but, you know, I found at the age of 26, you know, I was married to a man that, you know, put us into like three quarters of a million dollars of debt and borrowed a large sum of money from my my mother. And um, it was very toxic for me. I, I had a really hard time living with that kind of debt. I was always very good financially. I always had a great credit score and lived within my means. And this was just making me ill on a daily basis. And um, even though you and your sister were very little, you know, I found a, a point where I had to face my fears and leave this toxic relationship, uh, even though I did not want to break up my family. So it was a very difficult decision. But, you know, and this is what I find 
again, in my coaching practice, a lot of women and men don't want to break up their families, but they're living a life that's so sad or dysfunctional um, or toxic is what I call it. And it makes you actually feel sick inside. You you feel anxious. You feel depressed. You can't sleep. You can't eat or you overeat. Mm. So, and actually that's my forthcoming book coming out in December, uh, which is Love Beyond Your Dreams, uh, Break Free of Toxic Relationships to Have the Love You Deserve. And um, I just thought I, I do this. Uh, I've experienced it myself, you know, uh, loving someone that had some issues that they brought into the relationship. And uh, why was I attracted to that type of person? And there's got to be some warning signs I can look for up front. Yeah. So I did the heavy research on this for a year, and I put together a really fabulous book that my clients are all excited for it to launch. <laughs> and it's due out in December and then in paper book in January. Oh, great. So let's talk about the book that's already out that obviously I was a part of. I wrote a little section in there for young people. Um, it's called Live Beyond Your Dreams, and it's about accomplishing what you want in life and then setting the bar higher. So this is a big thing. I think, you know, you, you kind of brought it up in the beginning. There's a lot of people out there that, you know, have these big dreams in life, but there's so much that stands in our way, especially, you know, we have outside influences of people saying, oh, that's not possible. Like, good luck with that. We've got, you know, our own self-doubt that creeps in and says, that's not possible. Good luck with that. (laughs) So, (laughs) so let's talk about the book a little bit from your perspective. How do you live beyond your dreams? Okay. Well, this is, uh, it's a mindset system, which, came out of this whole leaving of your your dad um, when he said to me, you know, you'll never make it in this town without my last name. And I said, watch me. And there I was in the middle of my model and talent office and I didn't have any money in savings. I was living in a town where I had no family support and I had no idea how I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. That's how it begins with facing that fear and saying, life has to be better than this. Mm. So um, I got very deeply spiritual and and prayed on it. And just day by day, I set goals for myself so that I could make it. I mean, at that point, I was told I couldn't even have the model and talent company because I had to be licensed. I had no idea. I was 26. (laughs) I just wanted to support my kids. And I knew I could have a model and talent company because... I modeled for uh, 13 years by that time, I think it was. Um, So I just developed something that I thought would work. Well, then it was the grueling task of becoming licensed Mm -hmm. and uh, without having money to get a loan or uh, pay for an attorney or an accountant. I did all this myself. And then the Board of Education wanted a training manual, so I had to write the book. So that was really my first book, and it was a 250-page training manual, fully illustrated. Hmm. And I remember walking into, very innocently, into the board of um, licensing in Harrisburg with just myself, and there must have been 42 people sitting in a U with a, a table in the center, and I just sit down thinking, yes, I can have a school. You know, I need to have a school. I need to be able to support myself and my children. This has to go. Yeah. So I fiercely believe that I could do it. I deserve to do it. I worked hard to do it. And why not me? Hmm. So uh, miraculously, I was able to get licensed. And then so this watch me mindset developed within my own story. You know, that's why the story's in our book. You know, it's like I was very afraid. I, I was alone at 26. And with, you know, you guys, I think were three and four at the time. So Anyway, that's how the mindset started. And then as I was teaching my models and actors to succeed in their careers, which, by the way, you've done a beautiful job, sweetheart. (laughs) Thanks, Mom. (laughs) And uh, I really enjoyed watching your uh, career grow over the years and being a part of helping you do that. It was really enjoyable for me. But, you know, there were so many people. I had, you know, the models, singers, actors, and dancers from the ages of four to 84, and I have one story in the book about Hildy. I love her. She came to me at age 83, and her husband gave her a really hard time. Like, what are you spending our money for on modeling? She goes, I've wanted to do this my entire life. You know, she goes, I'm going to do this before I'm dead. <laughs> and so Hildy came in, and she was like the life of the party. Everyone loved her. I had her in fashion shows. 
Well, lo and behold, Hildy became one of my busiest book models. She did senior billboards and brochures for hospitals and banking and many different industries. And then her husband came in to thank me and apologize. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> now, at that point, I was teaching everybody this Watch Me system because they all had individual stories. Sure. Another young lady who was a plus size model and her family was laughing at her saying, oh, you know, her name was Jennifer. What, you're going to be a model? That's a joke. You're size 18. And, it, and she was a beautiful person on the inside and outside. And I said, Jen, you can do anything you believe in. And uh, she became a plus size model for Ford. Wow. And did beautiful in her career. So I was teaching this watch me mindset innocently within the company that you kind of grew up and was always around, you know, um, to all these people. And I was watching them succeed and reaching their dreams and become so elated and so happy with their lives. And everyone says, Rihanna, you got to write a book. You got to write a book. And it's like, yeah, I don't have time. You know? <laughs> always had like four or five jobs, you know. Oh, is that where I get that from? <laughs> Yeah, you too. The chip on the old block, right? <laughs> yeah, so I finally got it together and wrote this book uh, because it was so deeply ingrained in me when I finally got the system more together. So if you'd like, I can go into that a little bit, how it works. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great because, you know, I think a lot of our listeners can relate to that. There's a lot of naysayers in life um, in whatever you do. And I, I do think even if you've got a fully supportive family and friendships in your life, there's also those fears and doubts that inevitably will creep in. I think a lot of us have so many things we want to accomplish and we, you know, we dream big. We're, we're creative right. beings as human beings and there's so much out there that we could do. But unfortunately, the fear of getting to that point, it does get in the way. So I think this is great. Let's maybe go through a couple ways of how people can take this on in their own life. Okay, yeah, Lex, I wanted to mention, too, um, what you just touched on. You know, young children are born perfect, and there's such a wonderful innocence. And it's very sad that the people along their way is the very people that tends to kill their dreams. Um, you know, they say, I want to do this, and instead they say, oh, you can, or like, oh, really, that's, that's funny. And I remember you sitting as a young child, and the TV commercials for Save the Children would come on and said, Mom, I'm going to save those kids one day. Mm -hmm. and I know you will, babe. I know you will. And here you are with your charity, Epic, putting water wells in Africa saving the children and the families from their waterborne illnesses mm -hmm. and that makes me very proud but i don't know if you remember that where i, I don't would you don't no but i you know what i remember those commercials and i remember being affected real like i still as i'm saying this i, I have the images in my mind of those old yeah. commercials yeah, yeah. and and you used to sit there i'm going to go to africa mom i'm going to help those kids and i said i know you will Mm -hmm. um, and I always try to encourage you and your sister Stefana to, um, you know, dream big and go for it. And why not you? Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of my questions I often ask to, to the people I work with. Um, and then when you wanted to be a singer at age 15, you know, I said, OK, let's do this. And, you know, actually, you, you got to sing with a, a top recording artist and are on three multi-platinum CDs and traveled the world. And that's how you ended up in Africa. So, you know, the spiritual world, there is no mistakes. You know, yeah. you may not have chosen singing as your full-time career, but that's what brought you into Africa, which is your passion work. Right. You know, so everything comes together. It's so interesting when you really follow your dreams that you may get to a certain point and say, okay, this was cool. I'm really happy I made it. And this is what you talk about in the book. Mm -hmm. But I think now I want to try something else. And yeah. that's a two, you know, so it, it's, it's interesting doing this system. It brings you into a dream, which leads into another, which leads into another. And that's the concept of live beyond your dreams. Yeah. See, and I think that's great because a lot of people say, you know, I've got this one big dream and then they get there and they call it the depression of success, you know, and, yeah. and a lot of motivational speakers and authors talk about this, where you get to the top and you finally reach this, like, holy grail that you've been talking about forever. And you're like, right. oh, is this it? And then you kind of are like, I thought this would make everything better. And I think we have to change our mentality that it's not one holy grail. It's it's just one mountain to climb in a whole range of mountains, you know, exactly. where you've got to climb the next mountain and you've got to keep setting the bar higher for yourself. 
Exactly. And like I said, when I was 17, I had those five dreams and I knew I couldn't do them all at once, Mm -hmm. you know, and it was a matter of being patient and doing them when the time called me to do it. Yeah. Wanting to be a psychotherapist. I knew I had to go back for my master's program, but I had you two to support, you know, so financially that was impossible until my age of 37 when I finally went back to school to get the counseling dream. And then recently I just got licensed for Florida because I always wanted to live in the sunshine. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so maybe uh, that's like a future goal to war- move to a warmer client climate. Yeah. And uh, it'll change yeah. your life. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I know I was living in Erie, Pennsylvania for so long in the snow belt. I was, I'm in New Jersey. I'm getting closer to the sunshine, but <laughs> Uh, the next goal is to get to the sun soon. But anyway, then you went into a negative uh, thinking. So as children grow up, uh, they have all these dreams and either coaches or teachers or parents are the ones that say, you can't do that. And I remember at one point your dad even said, you can't be a singer. And I said, tell him, yes, you can, you know, and uh, and here you are. But um, the negative thoughts were, you know, people now at adult age usually have eight out of 10 of their thoughts are negative. Hmm which is very sad. And you can't do mental mind conditioning and control to switch that around where eight out of 10 are positive thoughts. Maybe one or two creep up. You have the instant ability to go into positive self-talk and change that negative thought by capping it with a positive statement, which is either inspirational or affirmational. Mm -hmm. So uh, I go into that a lot in the book. Um, but it's normal human to get conditioned to jump to a fear-based thought when you're faced with unexpected trauma in your life. So, but this can be changed. And just recently, you know, I was at the Tony Robbins seminar, um, power within, which you encouraged me to attend and I loved it. It was a four day, very powerful, motivational seminar. And the first night I thought we'd do it the last night, but the first night we had a walk on the 2200 degrees, uh, hot coals. And I was, you know, and someone asked me, what are your fears? I said to walk on the hot coals because I love to dance. (laughs) Feet are burned. I'm going to be really upset about that because it's (laughs) passions. So it's like, if I can do this, I can do anything, you know, and they teach you, you know, there's three things that you have to do to gear yourself up for change. One is, you know, to get into the emotional state. Another is to keenly focus and see within your mind exactly what you are doing, want to do and succeed in doing. Yeah. So you see yourself succeeding. So I had a picture of myself walking across those coals, like nothing is bothering me. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, the third is getting your body into that physiological state. So you have a certain body move that you make. You do the deep breathing. Mine was saying yes, you know, three times and grabbing my fists. And I was fourth in line. I went with my friend Eva and I said, you go first. Let me see you. And I thought, good. These coals have been out for a while, but they probably have cooled down. <laughs> come with a wheelbarrow and the more steaming coals and they're all red flamed and all the steam is coming off and I'm like, oh crap, you know, (laughs) coals down right before I walk. But it's amazing because as you know, you say the words out loud, cool moss, and you have to walk slow. I thought, do you run across? No, you got to walk slow, but with purpose. Mm -hmm. And it was not hot. I did not get burned. I had no marks on my feet. I'm like, How scientifically did this work? Right. Well, and it truly blew my mind as well. Like, I remember the whole time, you know, I remember Tony inside the auditorium or the space where he's giving the seminar. You're like on fire. The whole room is charged with energy. You leave (laughs) the building and everyone's like chanting. And it's like, (laughs) it's powerful. Like, I have chills right now thinking about it. But then you step up to that line and then all of a sudden, boom, that fear kicks in and you're like, what am I doing? You do have to definitely psych yourself up and it's such a keen focus. Yeah. So it's like a self-hypnotism, I would call it. Yeah, sure. Whether you call it self-hypnosis or extreme focus, like it just forces your mind to dial in on whatever you need to focus on. Right. Well, meditation has all the scientific uh, writing and, and tests behind it now. And I know that the movie The Secret goes into this with the quantum physics mm-hmm. as well. But um, the meditation, it lowers your anxiety, depression, your cortisol levels, your blood pressure. 
Um, and I didn't know I was, I, I seemed to be my own self ex experiment, science experiment, <laughs> but you know, I had cataract surgeries on my eyes mm -hmm. and I had one and the other one done and the second one malfunction. So I went, had to go in and have that one done again. So it's really worry because this is my site. And, uh, so I meditated before the third one. And an hour, you know, I, then I leave the house and I go over to the surgery center about an hour and a half up. I'm finally in and hooked up to the heart monitor and the heart rate was 83 over 53. Hmm. And I said, your machine must be broken because my blood pressure is normally low, but it's like 109 over 93. Mm -hmm. And here it's 83 over 53. And she goes, no, it's not broken. I said, well, check my chart. I've been here twice before. She goes, okay, what did you do differently? Huh. And I said, uh, nothing, but I meditated this morning for 20 minutes. She goes, why don't people get this? Like, this really, really works. Mm. So one, before they go into a surgery, needs to know you meditate. You lower all those body functions because she said now your body's in peak physical condition to go in and have a successful surgery and heal quickly. Mm. And I did. Wow. Like, I didn't know, like, I, again, I was my own science experiment, yeah. but there's but it, the truth of it. Yeah, it does make a difference. And I think, you know, again, talking about this Tony Robbins firewalk experience, experience for you and for myself, it, it changes your mentality then into what's possible. Like you thought before that was impossible. Like, how do you walk? barefoot over a fairly long pathway of burning hot coal. Feet, yeah. yeah, 12 feet. Yeah. That's far, you know, and you're yeah, not running far. across it. You are slowly walking, walking. and, yeah. and to get, and I love, that's why he does it on the first day, because to get that on the first day, then you step into the weekend, like, Oh, I can handle anything. Bring yeah. it. <laughs> you know? You're, uh, yeah, we're official firewalkers, hun. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Which is cool because then I bought the t-shirt. I'm wearing it all week at the therapy center and I'm explaining to people that I did this. I said, you did? I said, see, now you can do anything in your life. I know you read that in my book. I know I teach it here. Now you know I, you can walk on fire and I put signs. Yeah. You can do anything. Ask me. I walked on fire. Mm -hmm. So it just helps me to be a better coach. Because again, I lived that experience. Yeah. So, but I would recommend Tony Robbins seminars to any of your listeners because it's really phenomenal. Yeah. And he's great. it does help you get into that psychological focused mindset that you can do anything in your life. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Now, let's get back to the watch me mindset. So, okay. we all have people that, again, will say, okay, yeah, let me see you, or impossible. What could somebody do? Obviously, there's that first moment, that moment that you spoke about where it's like, watch me. Like, I can do this. You get so fed up with your current situation and right. all the negators that you're like, whoa, okay, now I need to, to set myself out to prove to you and to show you I can. What then would somebody do to accomplish these goals? Okay, uh, there is a system. So um, first of all, you have to be very clear on what you dream for your life. So you focus on this every day by either meditating or praying on it and seeing very clear images in your mind mm -hmm. of what it is you want to do. The second part is what I call the goal setting system. So you first, and there's um, in the book, there's these charts in the book, but I'll briefly explain it. You first do um, a definition of where you are now. Okay. And then you do six month goals and one year goals for your following life spheres, which is a personal relationship, parenting, your job or career or your school goals if you're in school. Okay. So those are six month and one year goals. And then after that, there's a sheet for your mini goals. So the mini goal sheet is you do three goals for today and you're doing that every day. So you wake up before you get out of bed. What are the three most important things that I get done today? Mm -hmm. And then if I have time, you add another one or two. Okay. Okay. And then um, the goals for the week and that you define three business goals and three personal goals that you want to be done by the end of the week. And my week I do a Sunday through a Sunday. Okay. Okay. And then you have goals for the month and these should be pretty hefty goals. What am I going to do by the end of the month? So it's amazing how much you get done and achieve when you use this type of a simple plan. So then once you've got the goals defined, certain things you have to do on a daily basis. You have to focus on your blessings, not what's wrong in your life. Okay, mm -hmm. so everyone will have challenges in Buddhism. We call it the earth school. So you just know the challenges are going to come your way. 
but instead focus on your blessings. And then you have to replace the negative self-talk with the positive, inspiring talk like we, we mentioned. And you have to focus on your solutions, not the problems that you have. Hmm. Okay. Define the problem already. Let it go there. There's a definition. This is where I have, you know, that's going on in my life. Now let's focus on the solutions. Right. Daily goals are what's going to get you beyond the problem. Right. So if my problem towards reaching my goal, let's say a big one right now for everyone is I don't have money. Like I don't have money to do this. I need to focus on work and blah, blah, blah. What the solution to that could be, okay, where can I carve out an hour maybe before work or an hour after work where I've I fully work on developing my dream. So focus on the solution, not the problem. There's always going to be problems. Right. But there's also always going to be solutions. So whatever you focus on expands. So if you focus on the solution, you'll get more solution and less problem. Exactly. Going back to the example before, I mean, when I started my model and talent school, I had no money. I just had a huge bankruptcy. I couldn't get any loans. I couldn't ask my mom for money. You know, I had two little girls to support. You know, there was no money. Yeah. So you have to do what I call out of the box thinking. What can you do differently that nobody else is doing in your market? Mm -hmm. Erie, Pennsylvania at the time, there was a fashion school. Well, Erie's not a fashion town, it's commercial real people. Right. I was smart enough to know that, so that's how my agency was. Did I have fashion types? Yes. I mean, you grew to 5'11", you're a fashion girl, you're a fashion type, but not everybody was. Mm -hmm. Most of the people were commercial real people. So that was a niche that made it different. Mm -hmm. So you have to be creative in your thinking. If you can do that and think outside of the box with your marketing and your promotional things, um, for example, one of my mottos was help yourself by helping others. So every one of my classes did a fashion show or community outreach program. Mm. Let's say Rape Crisis Center or the Humane Society fashion show. They each picked a project where they would raise money to give to a needy cause. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then along with that came some newspaper and television publicity. So I didn't have to pay for that. Right. They just came to cover the models, to cover the activity. The uh, program we, we did benefits for had money raised or, you know, social awareness. And then at the same time, the models enjoyed giving back and it helped the agency too. So sure. everybody won. Yeah. So it's all about being creative. And I look back again through the years, every business I've had, I've started with, you know, no money, huge money dollars invested in it. Right big business plan. It's like I, it was all my business plan was in my head because I focus on it. I set the goals. I do my goal system and it comes together. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that's important and- to note. I think a lot of people, you know, it's the paralysis of analysis. Like we can spend years planning something and sometimes you just have to start and you have to put an idea into action. And like mm-hmm. you said, you set these small goals along the way three goals a day. Okay, what are the three things I need to accomplish right now in the present moment to make the next step happen? Right. And it's amazing and incredible what you can really accomplish with that mindset in, in the sense of just starting and working the steps. Right, exactly, exactly. And it is um, part of this is living consciously, meaning living in the now, mm-hmm. uh, focusing on this day, Certainly not the past because you can't change anything in your past. So you just let that go. Focus on today, but still you have that long range goal in your life as well. Mm -hmm. And like I said, in April, a year and a half ago, I set this lofty two year goal, which I'm right on path. You know, I had the book and the app come out within four months of setting that goal. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, that is. This book and the app. And then this new book I wanted launched by this Christmas. And here I am right on schedule. Mm-hmm. And and the next part in the spring is writing the, the e-book and the, the white papers. So I know they're in my future. Mm-hmm. But each day, you know, right now, what do I have to focus on? Finishing the website off, you know, the Rihanna Milne website and um, finishing off some, you know, less and editing and uh, the formatting of the new book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm doing, focusing on what I need to focus on, but that end goal is always in mind. Yeah. And it's a parameter that you set for yourself. So you meet it. If you set no parameters, there's nothing to meet. And I I have a good friend who I love when he says this, he's, he's like, you know what, if you give yourself a year, you're going to not do anything for about mm, six, seven months, eight months. And then all of a sudden at month eight or nine, you're like, oh crap, I've got to get, I've got to get that done. 
<laughs> you know? And, right, and right. you can you can get, actually, you can get that thing done in three months or two months, but you gave yourself a year because you didn't want to push yourself. But if you can set those parameters, like like yourself, four months to get a book and an app launched, most people would be like, um, you're pushing it. Like, that's a lot. You know? And you're like... Dedicate yeah. myself to the effort. So. Right. Well, and you set the intention for yourself, and it's like, okay, well, I, I've got to make it happen. You know, you burn the ship. You, you get.